Ben, Beasts of the Southern Wild is a real love letter to Louisiana. And I know you've lived there since about 2006, but how did it change the way you felt about the area having made the film? Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I've been living in New Orleans since 2006, but this movie kind of took me to another part of Louisiana, all the way south down the bayou in South Terrebonne Parish. And um, it's a totally different culture down there. And so that was like a really new experience for me um, to get to know, um, you know, New Orleans is a, is a city and, and, and the place where the film was shot is really, uh, you know, a town that sort of thrives on fishing and, and um, used to thrive on, on agriculture and stuff. And so it was, it was a really interesting thing to kind of um, get out of the city and go into the wild and, um, you know, kind of um, make a film up against nature. Crevengine, you play the film's lead. What was it like acting opposite beasts that weren't actually there on set? Uh, for the pre-start and like, we just drew one and we just saw how it looked and we were like, okay, let's go to the real scene and we did the real scene and we had it straight on. So we didn't have to do it over and over and over <laughs> and over again. What's Ben like as a director? Is he a hard taskmaster? No, not really. <laughs> Sometimes I do it a lot of times though. Yeah. Sometimes I do a lot of takes. One time he said he was going to do it five times. What did you enjoy most about playing Hush Puppy? Uh, she was fun, hardworking, and she would do what she was supposed to do. Would you be friends with her in real life if she existed? If she would wear pants together. Ben, how did you discover Quaven Um, she, she came in, into an audition in, in um, Terrebonne Parish Library, um, you know, right near where we shot the film. Um, and it was part of a massive kind of grassroots casting search that we did for nine months and looked at 4,000 kids. And, um, you know, um, thankfully through probably a series of coincidences, she just Want, you know, came into the audition and, um, you know, uh, we were, you know, when you when you decide that you're going to make your, your film with a six year old star, you're essentially banking on a miracle. And, you know, we, we, we got one when, when she when we found her. I know it was a very collaborative process with all the actors. So how did the character of Hush Puppy change when Covengine came on board? Um, she became very wise. I mean, one of the things that struck me about her from the first time she came in is that she always had, there was never a subject that she didn't have an opinion on or an idea about. And so, you know, it was really interesting to me, you know, when you, when you write a child character, you don't necessarily think of them as a kind of sort of sage, wise man almost, but, but she had that quality. And so that was always an element of Hush Puppy that she would speculate about stuff. But um, when, when we cast Covengine, it became this almost... Um, voice of wisdom um, throughout throughout the film and a lot of her ideas ended up getting written into the voiceover and written into the way that she thought about the world. How did you go about coaxing such a natural performance from Quovengine in the film? Because obviously it all hinges on that, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, it was, it was a performance. You know, she's she's not she's not hush puppy. She's her own person and, and um, we had to work ourselves into the emotions for the scene. So it was kind of the two of us kind of pushing each other, jacking each other up. And I remember, I remember, you know, there's one scene where uh, she had to be really mad. And she said, I'm not mad enough. You need to tell me how mad I need to be. You got to tell me if I need to be yellow angry, red angry, or purple angry. And I was like, well, which is the most angry? And she said, well, purple is the most. And I, and I said, okay, well, I want purple. And she said, no, 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 I won't. Purple is, I, you don't want purple, you want red. And so she did red angry, you know. And th but that's how it was, you know. We'd figure out what the emotion was and we'd, we'd get ourselves there. You also cast a local baker, Dwight Henry, as Hush Puppy's father. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, that was a real New Orleans story. I mean, you know, we, we knew him because he was across the street at the bakery and we figured, you know, okay, well, we don't have to worry about where to find Mr. Henry. He's going to be at Henry's Bakery. But then we went back and Henry's was closed. We thought he could have left town. We have no idea what, what could have happened to him. And then eventually his new bakery opened and um, we found him there. And, and it took a lot of uh, kind of coaxing to convince him to um, take the part because he's really committed to his bakery. And so we basically just had to find a way that the film and the bakery could collaborate and coexist. And we just ended up doing all our work while he was baking and that allowed him to, to do the film. What's going to be next for you guys now? Quivengine, do you want to go on acting? Yes. What about you, Ben? 
Um, yeah, I want to keep directing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, um, you know, I really love the way that we made this film. It was this really special kind of like family operation. Um, and, you know, my intention is really to sort of keep that going, keep on developing that. Um, kind of grassroots uh, way of working. Um, you know, I'm hoping to bring back a lot of the same team and people and just get a chance to do this again.